So I'm Tom Bueller. Uh, yeah, and this is the Koala Project. Um, yeah, hopefully it'll work today. So um, just a bit of background. Um, I've been working on this for about a semester. I, I started back in January of this year. And this is the setup. So you have someone who wants to learn computer programming. Be it your little brother or Miss Texas. Uh, um, but there's a problem. We'll start simple. Um, we'll start by setting up your programming environment. Now, it's not as simple as you might think. So, you get a platform, right? And you have to decide where to go from there. Well, for a first time programmer, you don't really know exactly where to go. You kind of end up here a lot. Um, all right, well, once we finally get that set up, um, let's do a Hello World program. Um, okay, that's a lot of code. Um, what's with all this stuff? Like, there's a Hello World. I don't know what the rest of it is called that. Well, I didn't think about it. So, you can see there's some problems. Um, there's lots of different platforms and languages and IDEs, and that sets you up for bad setup. Um, my idea is to have a web-based programming language. There's no setup involved. You go onto the website, and it's there. Uh, it's for Boke's code, you know, C++. You'll see there's quite a bit of extra stuff going on there. Uh, my idea, let's just replace that with some very simple syntax. Um, with a very uh, forgiving interpreter. And that's the quality project. Yeah, and so this is kind of what it looks like now. You type in whatever code you want, run, and voila. These are screen caps just in case anything went wrong. Right now. <laughs> but uh, since last time, uh, I had a new programmer over summer who uh, wanted to join the project. Nick Chulski, and uh, thank him a lot for his work. He wrote a backend for the application in Rails. I'm not a backend guy. I do a lot of front-end uh, So it was very good to have him on the team. Fortunately, he can work this semester, so I'm looking for someone who knows Rails to help me kind of interpret that and make it useful. Um, but I've been working a lot on front-end stuff. There's been a bunch of uh, design enhancements, uh, changing up the, the layout, the theme. Um, one of the new things that I have uh, fixed is uh, fluid layout. So no matter how you have your browser window size, uh, the IDE figures out how to manage things, um, along with uh, the panel management, which is kind of a more intelligent way uh, to lay out your, your panels so you can reposition them. Um, and oop, I guess I forgot uh, what's next slide. But I can just go into that myself. Next, uh, I'll be continuing development on the front end, trying to get things looking pretty, and uh, also a bit on the interpreter, trying to get uh, get some some useful code out there, and maybe some tutorials for you guys to try out. Um, so thanks to Nick for taking a chance with Ruby over summer. Uh, he didn't know any Ruby, and uh, he spent a lot of time trying to learn it. So uh, thanks to the uh, the Arcos um, forum thing. Yeah. Because uh, uh, I forget who it was, but they helped me out a lot with Git. And everybody else for making this project possible. So thanks, guys. Any questions? Yes. Um, so this is primarily to teach people how to code. What kind of control do they have? Like uh, the Hello World thing popped up a message box, but will they be able? It's web based, so will they be able to control it, what a page looks like, move stuff around on it? Maybe like what kind of control do they have? Yeah. Um. Actually. Uh, hopefully this all. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, maybe if I can pause it here somehow. Yeah. Um, so there's this workbench panel over here, and that allows you to do some sort of GUI layout sort of thing. It's still a work in progress. There's not much you can do with it yet. But um, ultimately, the goal is to have it so that people can lay out boxes and make forms and put pictures and perhaps do some like sort of game dev things, associate objects with things, and be able to control them in the script. 
And will they ever be able to deploy that so other people can see it? Yeah. Um, this is, I guess, one thing I didn't mention is that this is on the foundation of open source and that when you go to log on, you can browse through other people's projects. Um, you can branch their code and create a project based on theirs and they'll automatically be tagged as an author. Um, and you can also send links to your friends and family and you know, play the game or your application or whatever you have. Yes? Uh, the pop-up window says JavaScript now. JavaScript application, so... It compiles to JavaScript, that's... What? It compiles to JavaScript, so quality code to JavaScript. Okay, so my so. question my question is, uh, will it only uh, compile to JavaScript, or can it also compile to uh, other languages? Um, the idea is only to JavaScript. That okay. makes it deployable on the web. Okay. Um, but there should be, I guess in the future, some more exciting things like being able to control Canvas. That way you'll be able to do pixel drawing and stuff like that. Yeah. So you're kind of making like a scripting engine that's on the web. Yeah. Which is, it's really cool. But have you considered like getting, um, I guess, uh, dynamic like context help to like help? Because this is to help them learn how to program, right? Right. That, um, that was the mention of uh, some side, like a uh, forgiving interpreter. Um, there's already code in place to basically highlight a specific line um, and say what's wrong with it and have a little uh, context pop up. That's good. Yes? Um, are there any uh, browser restrictions or does it work on Safari? Uh, um, I've been working very hard to make it sure it's uh, cross platform and cross browser. <coughs> um, so far it works on uh, Firefox, which is what I do my main testing in, um, WebKit browsers, and to an extent, Internet Explorer. It's always a battle. Yeah. <laughs> yes? Uh, have you tested it with any users yet? Like, people who are new to programming? Um, my little brother, who's eight years old, um, and he wrote a little application that had like a little mini conversation with itself. <laughs> um, he, he's my, I guess, primary audience, seeing, seeing as he was the uh, inspiration for this application. Yes. Um, are you like building in restrictions to it so like they can say, okay, I'm at the end of this, now I should go to something more advanced? Or are you kind of trying to make this like a more uh, advanced platform, I guess? That hasn't been quite determined yet. Um, there's another web-based, I guess, uh, implementation of Python called Sculpt I was looking into, and I thought that would be a nice next step for anyone who started out in Koala. And I was going to try to integrate some sort of uh, like leading them in towards uh, Python after this, but um, I don't really know how far I want to, how, how powerful this is going to be in the end. Um, certainly something that you can make maybe small games and somewhat useful calculators for other small applications, but um, certainly not to the extent of like <coughs> Fortune 500 web applications. This isn't meant for uh, like production environment sort of stuff. Yeah. I was just curious why you chose to make your own language as opposed to just, like, for example, trying to integrate with Python or some existing language. My brother's D. <laughs> 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 that's, that's why. So it's, it's pretty simple, but plain English. Um, the only thing I, I really couldn't um, get away from was uh, using, like, string delimiters. That was kind of difficult to figure out, you know, how to how to parse out strings and know what's a string and what's a command. Yeah. Is it compiled all on the front end or is it sent to a server and compiled and sent back? All in JavaScript. All right. Well, thank you very much.